Hello, very glad you could join us. This is Off the Press, where we'll bring you the major headlines from the National Dailies. I am Benny Ark. We've made a studio to analyze major headlines. A public affairs analyst, Dr. Femi Adigoke, and of course, a political analyst, Ugo Chuku Ikako. Thank you, gentlemen, for Good joining me this morning. Good morning. And straight up, we'll look at the headlines, the news making the headlines in the Punch newspaper this morning. Federal government generates 876.09 billion naira from VAT in nine months, says the National Bureau of Statistics. Deep-rooted dishonesty in Nigeria warranted border closure. President Mahmoud Buhari, that you can find in page two in the Punch newspaper. Court upholds IG's power to recruit 10,000 constables. Page nine in the Punch newspaper and federal government owes pensioners 400 billion naira says the senate and that is on page 31 of the punch newspaper world bank to federal government reform now to stop further slide into extreme poverty bank says 30 million more nigerians may be poor in 2030 and nigeria to be home of 25 percent of world's extremely poor people that is on page 30 in the punch newspaper Court orders for feature of Saraki's houses to federal government. Page 9 in the punch. And no apology for citing transport varsity in Dara. For citing transport varsity in Dara, says Amechi. Never captain gets bailed after one year in detention. And 11 corpses discovered in Rivers' abandoned boat. Buhari's disregard for court orders. Legendary, says the NBA, Shiites and Falana. Five awaiting trial, five awaiting trial inmates ex Electrocuted in Ikoyi prison, police kills on door driver over 15 hour bribe. PDP may boycott future polls if Reagan persists, and that you find on page 20 in the Punch newspaper. And lastly, in the Punch newspaper, Messi wins record six Ballon d'Or, and that in sports. In the Punch, gentlemen, which of the stories would you want to bother on this morning in the Punch newspaper? Um, federal government generates 876.09 billion dollar from VAT in nine months as released by the National Bureau of Statistics and the World Bank is calling the federal government to reform now or to stop further slide into extreme poverty and bank says 30 million Nigerians more may be poor in 2030. Okay good morning, good morning. once again. I, I'd like to comment on that on the reform now okay or we slide more into extreme poverty, poverty because yes. I, I had a look at the story and the World Bank based on the statistics presently, they are advising that we must reform our economy situation right now because presently our population growth rate yeah. supersedes our economic growth rate. And then that means we're going at an alarming population, 22.6% yes. per annum. And our economic growth is still struggling at about 2.0% as at 2018-2019. And they further advised that they, we need to create more jobs locally, okay. more revenue locally, and then clamp down on policies that are not uh, externally inviting for foreign investors. So these are advice. And um, Mr. Rewani, who is, who is one of the economic uh, advisors to the present administration, has reiterated this and said, it's a wake-up call. So we will call on the government for Nigeria not to further go down as a poverty-stricken nation. 2030 is just 10 years away. It's not far. It's 10 years, and if we do nothing now, we'll find ourselves in the Waterloo. We're going to call Nigeria to be home of 25% of world extremely poor people by 2030. What are your reactions, your thoughts on this? Already we're the poverty capital of the world. Yes. Yeah, we, we, we've passed India in terms of uh, the number of poor people in Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, the word poverty in there says that for every six seconds, you have more people falling into poverty in, in Nigeria. So uh, what is happening is, is sad. And uh, the present administration, I think if there's one thing that they've shown us is that they don't have the capacity uh, to initiate reforms that are capable of lifting people up out of poverty. And um, for example, you know, we, we, we go every day, shout about the ease of doing business and the rest of them in Nigeria, whereas the opposite is what's happening here. For example, let's, let's use Lagos, for example. Currently, there is, there's this uh, tussle between the NULTW and the, uh, the, one of the riders in Nigeria. And we've seen how it is. You can't, you can't reform or you can't take people out of poverty if you have a government or you have a state government that is keen on shaking down businesses or shaking down enterprises. There is no way you can't do that. It, it doesn't work. There's no country in this world that has done that. And there's no country in this world that has made progress 
uh, of since the 90s, talk about Georgia, talk about countries that have progressed in terms of their economic development. They did that because they reformed, they opened up their market, not closing their market. So, and also, Nigeria is not the best place for uh, FDI investment in Nigeria. Currently, Ghana tops Nigeria in terms of FDI. Yeah. And we're seeing that more people are going to Ghana, Ghana because if you put your money there, there's everything that, says that you're going to get your money back. Yes. So uh, investors are not charity people. They are not for the Christmas. They're not going to bring in their money to the economy. If the economy is, is, is in a way, we shut them out. If, if, if we're a country that does not obey the rule of law, uh, we saw what uh, Falana and MBA said, that this, this administration has gone so far in, in disobeying court laws and the rest yes. of them. So all these things ties in at the end of the day to, to doing business and bringing investors. Because if, if an investor is bringing his money into Nigeria and you understand there's going to be a shakedown at the end of the day, look at what happened to MT. So it, it, the, the investors' climate is not good. It's not a good one for, for, for the investors to bring in their funds. So for me, the most important thing is that Rewani will say what he's saying because he, he, he works for the government. But at the end of the day, what, what advice are they giving him? Because you can't be, can't be for pro-market or for free market, and you're working with a government that is very uh, centrist and very statist that makes it difficult for people to open borders or business to come in. So at the end of the day, the numbers keep going. And the fact is that you, you, can't, you, can't, push, you can't push that poverty number, you can't break it down if you don't, if you Investors don't come in. If people don't get employed, if the service sector does not employ more people, so it's a difficult thing. And the future does it just for me as an analyst. Hope is not a strategy. I tell people all the time. So there's nothing at this moment that shows that this government is willing to push back and to stop this thing. Because as we speak, for every six seconds that we're here, one Nigeria falls into the poverty rate according to World Poverty Index. Yes. Now, what are your thoughts on the court orders for for future of our kids' houses to the federal government? What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, I'm not sympathetic to Saraki. Okay. Because I've always said it, they're all the same. It's only the people that are on the opposition. Every Nigerian politician are selfish. We need to ask, what has he done, and what is his work profile to hand But In some quarters, they will say he's a winch hunt because he's now on the other side. But as a Nigerian, I'm saying, if they have their facts right, if the FCC is right, and they have the facts to, uh, for, uh, to take over the property, that is, was from ill-gotten wealth, then so be it. But as a Nigerian, I don't feel sympathetic, sympathetic to him. Ogochuku, in just a minute, what's your reaction to well, that? Well, I, I think the thing is that it, it goes to the court and the court to sort it out. And the truth is that, uh, this, that this administration is easy for if, if, you are, if you fall out of favor with them, yeah. you, know, you get the wind chant you and rest of them. So I think Saraki expected... So you think there's a wind chant on Saraki? I, I, I think it is a wind chant. I think yeah. he expected this. There's no way he will, he will go against them after leaving APC, going to the PDP, become his next president, did everything and come back and think that they will leave him. So it's for him to fix whatever it is that they're bringing for him. But at the end of the day, um, illegality, because at the end of the day, what we have is a government that uses illegality to fight legality. It does not help anybody. The rule of law should be paramount. If he has failed the law, they should get at him. But if he is not, they are doing it because of his witch hunt. It doesn't make sense, because at the end of the day, let's say a Tinibu flips tomorrow, that's still going to go after him, and okay. it does not help us. All right, quickly, let's take a look at the headlines in the Vanguard newspaper this morning. Police discovers 11 corpses in abandoned boat in Rivers. Policeman kills truck driver in Ondo over 15 naira bribe. That is quite a sad story. My father had 7,000 in his account when he was killed. Morita Lasson. I have no regrets citing transport varsity in Dara and Mechi. Ikoi prison tragedy. Our six inmates were electrocuted, 18 in coma. Only five dead, seven injured, minister said. Our facilities overcrowded, says Controller General of Corrections. And that you'll find in page four of the Vanguard newspaper this morning. And that revenue declines to 275 billion naira in quarter three in 2019. Nigeria appreciates to 362.70 um, in dollar in IE window. And five killed as police IPOP members clash in Anambra. Ganduje sends bill for four new Kano Emirates afresh. And border closure, domestic fuel consumption down by 30%, says the president, Mohamed Bari. And UBA Group emerges African Bank of the Year again. And lastly, this morning in sports in the Vanguard, Messi beats Van Dijk to record six Ballon d'Or crown. Thoughts, gentlemen? So, so the we, tragedy at the Koei prison, for sure, to start with that. Quickly, oh. I, think, I think for me, you see, the, part, of the, part of the issue that we have in this country is that uh, we're always reactive. You know, a couple of weeks back, Fisayo, I can't remember his, his name, a, a, an investigative journalist, you yeah. know, he went on the ground to show what was happening from uh, the Shomoli police station down yes. to Ikoi prison. Yeah. He documented it very, very well. And yeah. as, as we speak today, nobody, 
Nobody has been suspended. The Minister of Interior has not suspended anybody. Nobody has gone home for failing to do their duty. Nobody has gone home for uh, abusing the judicial process, the court process. And is this MEKO prison that six, uh, a few weeks later, six people died, six inmates were electrocuted. And we've seen how they trade uh, justice there with money and the rest of them. And what did they do to Fisayo? They tried to arrest him for speaking the truth, for being a journalist. So mm -hmm. it shows you the kind of country that we have. See, at this point, the, the, prison, the person that is in charge of the prison in Koyi, yeah. and whoever is in charge, the Ministry of Interior, they should be sacked. That is the conversation that we should be having at the moment. Not because people that we are giving to you to rehabilitate them, to make sure that they pass through the prison process and come out better, if possible, you killed six of them. Not just one, six of them. Yes. And, and nobody is going to go, go home for that. Nobody's, nobody will be sacked because we saw what happened with the uh, FSIO investigative do the documentary. So at the end of the day, it is sad. But this is Nigeria where, where, where human, be human, human beings lives are not valid. In some countries, cats are more valued than lives here in Nigeria. And, and, it, and, it, and it is a sad thing. Any thoughts on that, too? Yes, 100%. I agree with him. It's just that it's sad. It's very pathetic that we have no, we are not a process. We've, we've said it times and times and over again, that we're not a process nation. We just, we're worse than a banana republic. Uh, without any doubt, Nigeria is worse than the Banana Republic now. Like he said, a journalist took it upon himself and did what we call, what we are always agitated for, that our journalists should take a step further, do investigative journalism. And he did that. And for six weeks, nothing is done. Hmm. They have not even looked at what he said. And now we're having what is happening in the prisons, six people dying, some people are injured. And then, like he said, Nothing, nobody's going to go down for it. I'm not even saying just sack them. There has to be investigation. And then, like he said as well, we've heard stories of how money trades hand in the prisons. And it brings us back to the poverty we're talking about. Look at what you, you read the story there where a policeman Shots. tried to kill someone. Yeah, for bribe over 50 naira. Over kill struck driver and owned over 50 naira well, bribe. It's, it's really sad. Now, um, Amechi seems to be very vocal and says he has no regrets citing the transport vastity in Dara. Uh, some, some reaction from to say he's, he's been a psychophone at this point in time. Do, do you have any reaction to, to Amechi's statement? He has no regrets citing the transport vastity in uh, Dara. People say a lot of these to, to themselves to make themselves happy yeah. and to make themselves feel good. I think that's what Amechi is trying to do because I, I, as he stands now, uh, politically, I don't think he has enough, 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 enough capital, be it in the south side, be it in Asso Rock. So whatever he's saying is just to sound good and everything. If he feels like he did the right thing, that's, that's for him. But uh, in Nigeria, I don't think having a transport university is the best thing that, that we need at this point. And in Daura, I can't remember how many... Uh, Transport companies work there. I can't remember how many flights come in there every day. So if you're exactly. gonna if you're gonna do something that is sensible, it shows that Amici is not a sensible human being. Because if you're trying, if you're indeed gonna cite the transportation something, you should cite something within maybe Lagos or uh, within, within the South South region where you have and, it. And in the north, maybe Kano. God bless you. In the north, yeah. Kano that has an influence of a uh, yeah. uh, flight, trucks, commerce, great, commerce, great, great, commerce, great, great commerce there. Yeah. So yeah. there is no there is no business of taking that to a desert area because I don't understand. Maybe he did that to get favor from the president. I hope that whatever. I do that for you, you get it at the end of the day, but it does not make sense, it does not make economic sense. All right, let's quickly look at the headlines in the distant newspaper. Any ITI FA FAC disbursement hits 2.273 trillion naira in quarter three in 2009, and VAT revenue drops by 36.82 billion naira in third quarter. Still, also in the distant newspaper, court upholds IG's power to recruit constables. You see that in page six. In this state, PDP threatens to boycott future elections over electronic voting. And that's something we need to bother about this morning, gentlemen. Um, rigs of progress, they say. Buhari receives reviewed national security strategy. Federal government border closure doubles customs daily revenue to 8 billion naira. And South African policeman jailed for killing Nigerian. And lastly, in this state this morning, um, Okay, I think that's, that's, it. that's it in this day this morning. Let, let's, let's talk, let's put on this quickly. Um, the PDP threatening to boycott future elections over electronic voting. Let me start with you. Yeah, yeah. well, they can come out, like you said, they can come out and talk on it. But they have people in the National Assembly. I've said it here before. This is, is this time to reform our electoral act. Yes. This is it's not waiting till the eve of election in 2023. And you now come up with the bill to reform the electoral act. So if PDP really are a worthy opposition that they are supposed to be, they should begin to make enough clamor for the reformation of our electoral act now. 
not coming on the pages of newspaper and telling us that you're going to boycott election. But there are things you need to do first. before. If that is not assented to, then you can take the second option. Mm. What, what we're not going to give PDP is our sympathy as a nation. All right, we're not going to give that, that to them. Like you said, they have National Assembly members. What are they doing? We've been hearing conversation about the uh, social media bill. Have PDP come out as a party to say anything? Have the minority leader in, in, the, in, the, in the National Assembly, in the, in the lower house of assembly and the upper house of assembly, uh, National Assembly, have they come out to say this is what we're doing? This is PDP. And also, given the fact they were there, they were in power for about, uh, about 16 uh, years, uh, uh, so and they did nothing uh, about so, the electoral so, so, bill. So. so if, if you're, you're pushing Buhari to do something that he didn't do, all right, because everything at the end of the day has political calculations for that too. It. If Buari does this thing, how does it favor his party at the end of the day? So mm. you guys didn't do it your own part. Let me leave it that. So at the end of the day, you see that they're, try, they're playing with the destiny of the nation. But for me, PDP as a party has not proven themselves to be a worthy opposition in the country. Um, they, if they can keep crying like a baby to tomorrow. If they want to fix the nation, they know what to do. If they want to do something, they want to do up as opposition, they will get up and do it. For now, they're not serious about it. And crying in front of newspaper will not help uh, the leadership of the party. Oh, it's reported also that Buhari received revealed national security strategy and the federal government says the border closure has doubled the custom daily revenue to about 8 billion naira. Good news, gentlemen, thoughts on this? For me, for me, for me I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of the border closure. Okay, why? All right. Why? Number one is that you can't close Nigeria border. Nigeria has a porous border. We have more than 2,000 borders in this country that are now on police every day. So Nigeria has one of the most porous borders in the world. It's easy for people to town this thing, to say this on TV and clap for themselves. Is this same country that, this same government that came and told us that they've wiped Boko Haram a few weeks after we, we stopped things. So for me, there, there is a difference between propaganda and governance, all right? I can mention places from um, Niger State, from Kwara, from Kano, Kastina, the borders that are open, that are porous, that people smugglers bring in things every day. You can cross Benin. You can cross the same border. We all know that because we know, we know how it, it affects us. By the end of the day, closing border does not, it shouldn't be what you do to generate revenue. That is a misplaced priority in governance. That doesn't help in any way. How do you, how do you generate revenue as a government? Is most importantly your investment climate. Nigeria does not have a good investment climate. Who can speak and talk about border closure at the end of the day? It will affect the poor people. It will affect people that have an economic base within that area. So what that did does not help anybody because at the end of the day, Nigeria has a porous border and nobody is doing anything about that. Not immigration. Not customs. I don't know. So what are you doing? Arms are passing in through through the through, through, through Agadez and the rest of them and flowing into West Africa. And we see that every day. We saw that Kosovo said that they intercepted some arms a few weeks back. Yes. What are you doing? Who has gone to jail because of that? Who fed in his duty? Are you telling us you are not Minister of Finance? You are not a ganga that's supposed to tell us how much you have. Quickly, your thoughts on this in 60 seconds. Well, yeah. I agree with what he said 100 yeah. percent because closure of border does not translate to food on the table of an average Nigerian. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we've closed border for how many months now? And then the World Bank is still telling us that we need to reform our economic policy for us not to become, uh, to, not to have 25% people in extreme poverty. poverty yeah. So can we just be analytic? You making revenue from border closure, how does that affect the daily life of an average Nigerian? How does that improve an average Nigerian? All right, quickly, let's wrap this up this morning with Complete Sports. In Complete Sports, Ballon d'Or 2019, Messi bags record sixth award. And Ronaldo, the forgotten football of, footballer of 2019. Hmm. He and Acho was absolutely outstanding. And Liverpool draw Everton and Oshime, Tigers ninth league, one goal. Your thoughts on Messi bagging record six? Ballon d'Or. What are your thoughts on this, Togo Chuku? Messi is like the king that you know that they will crown at the end of the year. So uh, there's nobody else better than him as a footballer in the, on the face of the earth. I think he's the most talented player we've seen in a long while. And uh, he, I'm not surprised. He, he deserves it. And do you think Ronaldo is actually a forgotten footballer of 2019? Ronaldo has not had his best time in Juventus. So, he, so I think um, nobody has forgotten about him. Ronaldo is still up there. But uh, uh, side by side by Messi, it seems that Messi is the good, uh, like they say. Well, um, um, I'm a fan of Ronaldo and Messi because they've made me enjoy football in the last uh, 10 years. They've been the beauty of the game. But the truth is, Ballon d'Or is a personal achievement. And in the last one year, let's be fair, Messi has outbeat Ronaldo in the last one year. Messi scored more goals and won the La Liga, even though Ronaldo won the uh, Serie A League, but he, didn't, uh, he was not the top scorer. So, and he didn't win the Champions League as well. He might have won the European League Cup with his country, but the Ballon d'Or is mainly on individual performance. And so, it was a well-deserved uh, uh, 
uh, honor, honor for yeah. Messi. But it's, it, we need to see the guy out of this world because six time Ballon d'Or, it's, uh, it's amazing. He must be commended. He's a great footballer. All right, that's all we can take this morning on Off the Press. I want to say, gentlemen, it's always a pleasure having you on the program. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. And this is where we're going to wrap it up. Join us again tomorrow by 8.30 a.m. And have a great day.